I have an idea. And this is an idea that's based on a question that I've been asking for the last four years. What will it take to educate every child on earth? Now, that's a question that I guarantee you never crossed the mind of this guy. That's me, five years ago, starting around a deep, dark, delicious tan <laughs> in, in front of about 400 people in a pair of bright blue man panties. <laughs> I, I'm actually wearing them right now. <laughs> and I'm not kidding about the tan. I had to lather that thing on at 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., and 6 a.m. to get it that dark. I was proud of that tan. And obviously no one told me I was supposed to put it on my face, too. <laughs> Oh. The reason I like this picture is uh, because to me it represents the climax of my outward search for happiness. I was 26, I was in the best shape of my life, I had a really cool house by the ocean, I rode a ridiculously fast motorcycle, I had a booming real estate business, I had recently become a millionaire, and I was completely, utterly, and hopelessly empty. But this genius had an idea. He thought, well, look, if what I want is fulfillment, then maybe, maybe I can buy it. And where do you go to buy fulfillment? Africa. Four months after that picture, the bodybuilding show was taken. I hopped on a flight, and I went to Uganda and Kenya, and I went to a number of different villages, and this was the first. There's steep hillsides, lush jungle. It was incredibly beautiful. And the best part about it was these kids. These kids were all over the place. They were chasing us, they were laughing, they were playing, they were joking. And after we met with some of the village elders, we learned that there's a couple things that, that these children don't realize yet. They don't realize that half of these people, half of their village, has AIDS. They don't realize that the youngest kids, like this little girl here, she has a higher chance of dying before the age of five than living. <clears throat> and the people that have it the worst are the girls. They've got it the worst for about a thousand different reasons, one of which being here, it's typical to get married at the age of 11 or 12 as a girl to a much older man and spend the next 20 years of your life working tirelessly and having as many babies as that man would like. I remember meeting these girls and looking into their eyes and knowing what they had in store knowing I could do nothing about it, and feeling just deep helplessness. The next village that we went to had a similar culture, but something very, very different was going on with the kids. In these schools, these kids, they're not just learning math and science and geography and social studies. These kids, these boys and girls, are learning gender equality, family planning, how to prevent diseases like AIDS. And in short, these little girls, like the two at the front, these little girls are not getting married at the age 11 or 12. As you see, when a girl in the developing world receives an education, she gets married an average of four years later and has 2.2 fewer children. When a child is born to a mother that can read, that child has a 50% greater chance of surviving past the age of five. And every year of school, that a girl receives increases her earning potential by up to 20%. Now, this trip, this trip was fast. It only lasted about a month. But when I got home, I knew immediately that the trip, the uh, effects were going to last a lifetime. I remember the first grocery store I tried to walk in after I got back. Got about five steps in the door. It's all the food that we have available to us and just cried. I remember driving past a schoolyard here, where we have a right to education and having the exact same reaction. And that's when that question started burning in my mind. What will it take to educate every child on Earth? So I started researching. I learned that there's organizations all over the world, in nearly every country, ready to reach every single child. They simply lack the funding to do so. So I said, you know what? I want to be the bridge. I want to be the guy who gets the money to these organizations so they can carry out the work and reach every single child on Earth. So for the next year and a half, I became absolutely obsessed with fundraising. I 
researched everything I could. I studied what was working, what wasn't working. I did experiments in giving. I tried to invent a couple new ways of fundraising. And after a lot of trial and error and a lot of research, I came up with a formula that is very simple that I believe will work in every age, gender, race, and geographic sector in the developed world. And it goes like this. 33 friends giving $3.33 a day for three months equals $10,000. $10,000 is enough to build one of those schoolhouses, like the one that I walked into with those two little girls at the front of the room. These schoolhouses educate 50 children a year for well over 20 years. That's 1,000 kids that will get to use one of these schoolhouses. So a group of friends, 33 people, giving the price of a cup of coffee a day, $3.33, for 90 days, three months, equals 1,000 children educated. When I came up with this, uh, my mind was like exploding. I was like, yes, this is it, this is the one, this is the answer. I was like, I just gotta find someone to test it. Who can test it? And I realized it was gonna be me who had to test it. So I sat down and I wrote down this list of 33 unsuspecting friends. And anyone who owed me a favor. And. With it, before I sent it out, or before I communicated with these people, I w didn't want them to feel like I was chasing them down for donations kind of thing. I wanted to get it all done at once, so I made them a video. I partnered with a friend of mine, his name's Steven, brilliant graphic designer. We made a video that's three minutes long to tell all my friends exactly what they needed to know. It said, we're building a schoolhouse, it's going to educate hundreds of kids, everyone's going to get a cool Facebook cover photo and a tax receipt. It said it's the same price as a cup of coffee, or a slice of pizza, or parking downtown for two hours said it's less than the tip that you would leave at a restaurant. And we finished it off by saying, by the way, your mom is going to be really proud of you <laughs> if you build a school. <laughs> now, before sending it out, I also wanted my friends to feel like they were part of this cohesive group of 33 people getting together to do something massive. So I made all of them a 30-second video on my webcam that said, like the one I made for my friend Mike, who's at the back of the room, said, Mike, we've been friends for a while. I know you've got a big heart. You're going to love this initiative. We're building a school. You and me and my friends, watch this video. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. So that video, loop into the animated video. We put it on a donation page like this so that I could watch it, feel all warm and fuzzy that his friend made him a video, feel inspired, want his mom to be proud of him, enter his credit card information, and he would be done. So I sent it out to a bunch of my friends, and very, very shortly after, 33 gave and you guys know what happened. Right now, there is a schoolhouse in a village called Wangaza that every day is full of 50 kids learning how to read, learning how to write, learning how to count. And I tell you, all the bodybuilding shows and all of the money in the world cannot touch how this school that my friends and I built together makes me feel. So when this was done, I was the happiest man on earth. I was like, it's working. This whole free thing is working. And I needed to get someone else to try it, so I needed a guinea pig. This is Elton. And when I met up with Elton, he said, yeah, I love the school building idea. It sounds great, Taylor, but my family's from India. Can we build a school there? I said, absolutely. So Elton did the same thing as me. He sat down, wrote out his list of 33 friends. Well, actually, Elton's a massive overachiever. He wrote down 50 friends. <laughs> and he's always got to one-up me. <laughs> wrote down 50 friends. And he made them all personal videos. We put them on this donation page. We sent them out. I'll never forget. It was a Monday afternoon, 2 o'clock Monday afternoon. And I said, okay, now, Elton, don't set your goals, your, your site's too high. Let's just hope to get a donor by tomorrow, another one by Wednesday, another one by Thursday. You get a donor a day, you know, 33 donors, 33 days, $10,000 in a month. That'd be pretty incredible. Shoot for a month. He said, yeah, sounds great. We sent him out. Tuesday, I'm sitting at home with my fingers crossed. Elton calls, and he says, Taylor, we did it. I was like, yes, you got your first donor. It was your mom, wasn't it? I knew it. You're such a mama's boy, Elton. He said, uh, no, no, actually, we didn't get a donor. We got 33 donors. The school is funded. My head, again, exploding with ideas and this vision of anyone being able to go online and get their 33 friends together to give $3.33 a day for three months and educate 1,000 children. The next day, Wednesday, Elton calls me again, and he says, Taylor, you're never going to believe what just happened. He said, I just started to spread my campaign on Facebook. We now have 66 donors. We're not building one school. We're building two schools. In total, Elton had over 80 people give to his campaign, 
and that was it. I sold my real estate company. I sold almost everything that I own. I took out every loan that the bank would give me and decided I'm starting a social enterprise, and its mission is going to be educating every child on Earth. We started calling it Change Heroes. First, we had 10 people do what Elton did, then 20, then 30. Soon, we had funded 30 schools for 30,000 children. And the more I learned about the education space, the more I learned that it's going to take more than a lot of schoolhouses to educate every child on Earth. It's going to take libraries, teacher salaries, scholarships, and a lot of other initiatives. So we thought, let's push it further, and we included scholarships for girls to go to secondary school so they could graduate elementary school, bridge the gap between there and college, and then go get vocational training, whether it be a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor, and significantly change their lives. And it kept working. In the last two years, we've We've tested this on people in 25 cities all over North America. We've raised $600,000, funding 60 projects in nine countries that will educate and empower 60,000 children. <laughs> and right now is probably the most exciting, nervous, and humbling time of my entire life because after two years of working on this, seeing what works, what doesn't work, it's finally done. This month, the site will be done, and anyone can go to get their friends together to give the price of a cup of coffee a day for three months and educate 1,000 children. Now, I have no idea what's going to happen over the next 12 months. I'm pretty excited. All I know is that this all started because of some little girls that I met on my first trip to Africa. And I know now that I'm doing it for another little girl, too. too. <clears throat> Her name's Tasia, and she's my daughter. And I want Tasia to grow up in a world where every single child on Earth gets an education, an opportunity, and has a choice in their life. Thank you.